Howdy folks, the Greenside Project here, back for my music festival, which was lovely, thank you very much for asking. And I thought I'd do this short video to catch you up, let you know what uploads were coming, or I was planning to do over the next month. And whilst I was talking, I thought we'd have a lovely look through this vintage Codex Imperial Guard book from the second edition 40k. Obviously, I've been at a music festival the last few days, so there's no new minis. There will be soon. Let's have a look at this book, because it's mine. I had it, got it in about 1996. And we can just see... Oh, come into focus there. Originally printed 1995, so it's about 18 years old now. First thing you notice with these books, very bright primary coloured minis. Uh, I do think, now they're not to everyone's tastes, and I know we like to be very serious and grim dark about everything, but... The fluff, the fluff's still quite grim, dark guys. You know, the Imperial Guard, bless them, they're not the happiest of souls. They don't get much of a shot in life. They just get shot at in life a lot and then die horribly. Fluff's still grim, dark. Minis are brighter. I think the minis make you take the grim, dark fluff with a pinch of salt. Gives it a different angle on it. I know there's lots of people that enjoy the very serious sort of perspective of the 40k fluff. I do wonder if that's what the writers originally intended back in the early 90s when they were writing it. And I think those minis sort of illustrate that point. But anyway, they're not going to be for everyone, but there are some fantastically painted minis. Now, we've got the regular few pages of fluff and rules. I'm not going to go into that too much because that's basically me talking over people looking at text that's slightly out of focus. We're going to go straight to the lovely uh, colourful minis. If I see any that I think I nearly need to say something about, I'll do that. Otherwise, I'll talk about what's coming up. So, um, I'm going to be doing the July Challenge, Warboss Ties July Challenge, but a month later in August. So I'll be answering all the questions in the same order, or that sort of thing. But a month later, the first thing I'm going to be doing for it is spending a week finishing off my Dark Angels army with some Forge World bits and a couple of character models. And then after that, what I'm going to be doing is starting on an awful lot of Imperial Guard stuff. There's going to be some Krieg. I've shown the models for that in a previous video. There's also going to be some Mordians. There's also going to be some Talans. There might... Actually, no. There's almost certainly not going to be any Cadians. And sadly, probably no Rattlings. But there might be some yeah Valhalla Ice Warriors too definitely some of those in fact I'm gonna I've got a lot of models to paint up over August I'm gonna show them to you in the first couple of videos then get through some of them need stripping some of them need assembly some of them just need a really good painting I'm really looking forward to it it's basically gonna be Imperium August for me. It's going to be fantastic. I'm going to try and do some how to paints showing each stage. I'm going to do that first for the Talans. Uh, I'm going to talk you through the process I'm trying to do to get a distinctive colour scheme and style for my Krieg models. I'm going to try and replicate this lovely stylish seasonal blue scheme for the Mordians. It's going to be great. I've also got some other things coming from Forge World. I think I've, yes, uh, which will be interesting for people to look at. We'll be looking at those. I might do a showcase of some of my other old models. I've got a lot of free time this August, and I'm really looking forward to it. Even to the point I'm thinking, on the days where I know I'm not going to be around to record a video, I'm going to record, record one in advance. Look at these models. I do think a big thing about them looking different by today's standards... Well, there's probably two things. First thing, the basis are green, aren't they? Because in the mid-90s, the battles of the grimdark far future were all fought on lovely, even plateaued meadows. And it was only a while after this that it occurred to people, actually, they might fight in desert or in an urban environment. You know. And I think that pits people up to these with a, to a small amount. I can understand why it happened. It happened because all the gaming tables anyone had were green. Because a lot of them were used originally for fantasy battles. It makes sense. 
Uh, that's why secondly, and let's illustrate this with a picture that I'll find. Oh, Ogrins. Love the old models. Never had them myself. As you can see, it was back before they did big ground bases. I always remember people with them, though. They needed to be pinned three ways from Sunday, otherwise their arms would fall off mid-battle. The joys of white metal. Anyway. Um, back, back in the olden days, if you worked for heavy metal, that's my olden days voice, all you'd have to do, really, is paint. Paint one of each model that Games Workshop produced. And maybe do a couple to show different painting patterns. Got some examples there that they did. But basically, it was one of each model. And because of that, I think people take their time with the painting a bit more. Now, even today, I mean, heavy metal painters are fantastic and way beyond what I can do in pretty much every way in terms of painting miniatures. But they tend to look a, lot, a bit generic. You've got some fantastic painters painting some models really quickly and just trying to make them look identical to each other so they work in battle reports. Back in these days, they didn't really worry about having functioning army collections. They just worried about having each model painted. It was a real pain in the bum, if I remember rightly, for lots of Games Workshop White Dwarf staff who tried to do battle reports and couldn't find enough minis to sort of put together a particularly strong army. Uh... But no, that's how they did it. And I think, if you look at them, the models just all have, and it's not just the sculpts, although I do, I'm a bit of a fanboy of these Perry sculpts. There's just a bit more time taken with the shading. A bit more time taken with some of the shading. It's, I mean, maybe it's a taste thing. But anyway, do, 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 have a look at these guys. A bit of a layout as to how uh, the Imperial Guard function and structured the old vehicle cards we used to have. More rules. Lovely, lovely rules. For those of you that don't know, first edition 40k, which was a bit before my time, was very but it was very skirmish based. Second edition, this edition, still you didn't have you normally traditionally get that many models on a table. Rules were thus more detailed about specific things. And also, it was rare to field more than maybe 40 troops in even a reasonably sized army and I'm going to sum that up for us in a second by showing you this now a more wise man would have come back from the music festival and bookmarked the pages you want to show you but I'm not that man and I'm slightly running out of time on this video but anyway this is a sample 1500 point army for the codex five models ten models Six models. Five, five, ten, five. I counted them up earlier. Under 40 models for a 1500 point cannon fodder Imperial Guard army list. Armies were a lot smaller. Just an interesting thing to bear in mind. End of the book, just like we always used to have in codexes. Bits, a summary of all the bits that went into models. Bit of a plug for the other codexes. Dark Millennium, for people that don't remember, weren't there, or, you know, lost in the stage of shades of time, with the Psyker supplement, with all the Psyker rules and many, many cards. Then more of these pictures. Now, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I know it's a bit unusual. I know the lack of any proper minis. It's probably not to everyone's tastes. But I thought it'd be nice to do a quick chat, quick update, and just let you know, from tomorrow onwards, there's going to be lots of lovely, lovely minis, my minis, my painted minis, coming your way into your... YouTube account. So take care everyone and goodbye.